In his farewell words to the presbyters of the church at Ephesus, St. Paul commends them to God and to that gracious word of his that can build you up. One of the trademarks of Benedict XVI's service to the church has been his devotion to God's gracious word. It's that devotion which has kept him from being your ordinary conservative. In God's word, he found the freedom to lead the church in many counterintuitive ways, from the deposition of Father Maciel of the Legionnaires and other ways that he led in purging that filth from the church, to Samorum Pontificum, to Anglicanorum Shadibus, to finance reform, the theologian engaged in finance reform. Despite having a reputation for being introverted and rooted in the past, he started a pontifical council for the new evangelization, and he was the first pope to have a Twitter account. He had solar panels installed on the roof of the Paul VI Auditorium, and under him, the Vatican became the first country in the world to be a net zero emitter of greenhouse gases. He promoted an awareness of the plight of Christians in the Middle East, encouraged dialogue with Muslims, wrote a three-volume bestseller on the life of Jesus of Nazareth, all while being Pope. At his first World Youth Day, he spoke on the resurrection, a topic that could have provoked theological jargon that very few could follow. Instead, he said that Christ's resurrection was like a thermal nuclear explosion, transforming Christ in its wake and causing a ripple effect in the world that continues to this day. He has led by being devoted to God's gracious word. His longing for the kingdom is palpable in his writing, his teaching, his preaching, and now too in his resigning. Many will offer opinions regarding what Benedict achieved during his time with the papacy. What matter those opinions? When the more accurate measure is what God has or will continue to achieve in God's time and not ours. As people striving to be people of faith ourselves, we stand in thanksgiving for all that God has achieved and will continue to achieve in His church. And like St. Paul and the presbyters from Ephesus, we too say farewell for our part to Pope Emeritus Benedict by kneeling down and praying.